Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm just talking about six things that came to my mind that trip up beginners. And the reason why I'm making this video is I have my Python tutorial se series and uh, it's gotten a few hundred thousand views over the last year and a lot of beginners, they, they constantly ask the same questions. So uh, I think I think the, the, the six items here, I mean, like I said, it kind of immediately jumped out at me. I'm sure I'm missing other things, but I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into the list. All right, first is virtual environment. This is so hard to explain to people why you would need to do this because they don't understand packages. They don't understand virtual environments. They don't even understand how Python is installed on, on a machine or how uh, Python is used to execute Python code. Like none of that makes any sense. So when you're trying to uh, explain how to set up virtual environments and things like that when they're first getting started, it always just like, it's almost impossible for somebody that hasn't been in this game for you know, a while, I mean, six months or more probably for them to even be able to start to grasp, you know, some of the stuff like virtual environment and why we always use it. Uh, so that is something that I personally try to gloss over when I'm trying to do Python tutorials and things, because I just feel like it, you know, people aren't ready for that. And uh, eventually we'll be ready for all this stuff. But right now, like, you know, as a beginner, definitely virtual environment, just go ahead and have one Python installation and, and just use your pip install. Don't worry about virtual environments or anything. Um, that's my advice anyway for absolute beginners. The next one is path and this one only applies to Windows. So um, this is probably like the single worst thing that I've had to deal with on, on Python because a lot of Windows, uh, a lot of Python developers, especially newbies, uh, are using Windows and, uh, and Python works fine on Windows. But when you're installing Python, it used to be that Python didn't actually edit your path settings. Uh, and you would always ha you would always have to do that manually, and that was always a problem dating back, you know, it's, it's even all the way back to when I was first getting into Python. Um, and then, like with some of the later three series of Python, there started to be this option that you could check during the install to say, "Hey, add Python to my path." Uh, but anyway, if, if people didn't check that box, Python wouldn't run. Like Windows wouldn't know how to execute a Python program, and like nothing works, and and they get immediately frustrated. Like, and they're not even they're not even at step one and they're already like frustrated with the entire process. So um, yeah, path is something that, that has tripped up a lot of Windows Python developers for a, lo a long time. Next one is uh, unit testing. And this is something that uh, I would say beginners should also gloss over because they're gonna have a very hard time understanding how unit tests even work um, or even understanding you know, basic uh, things like encapsulation and, and um, you know how, how true you know, true unit test should behave in a unit test versus a regression test, things like that. A lot of that stuff doesn't make any sense to, to newbies and beginners. Um, and really the only beginners that have to know that kind of thing are the beginners that, that do land the job, you know, fresh out of college, something like that. That's where they immediately need to start looking into unit testing and how they can start um, writing unit tests for their code. Uh, because that's something they will have to do day to day. It's, it's, a, it's a mandatory requirement of the job. So I'd say, you know, as soon as people can feasibly get into unit testing, that's great. But um, immediately right out of the gate, it, it's really not something that, that most people should, should jump into. Next one is like IDE. And, and really, you could probably say IDE versus a text editor. Some people are real anal about the two differences there. But uh, there are clearly differences between an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, and a text editor. Um, with IDEs though, like there is much, th th there's a lot of great solutions. Like with my Python tutorial series, I always use Visual Studio Code because it's free and the Python uh, extension for it is, is like, it's really, it's really easy for me to be able to set up a, a debug environment um, and it's free. Now PyCharm is kind of the leader with Python um, IDEs and it's been that way for a while. That's made uh, by the um, JetBrains people and um, Anyway, there, there's other editors out there that you can use, including the actual, you know, Visual Studio product or uh, not even just Visual Studio Code. But there's a lot of different editors. Uh, that's usually a, a tripping point for uh, people because they want to know, OK, what is the best editor? Well, there is no such thing as like the best editor. And that stuff changes year over year. And people's preference plays a lot into that. So um, it's one of those things where a beginner expects to have somebody hold their hand and tell them exactly what they should be using, um, where like, and that's just not something that that Python people do really, and or really any any developer. I mean, uh, if if you, there are certain languages like C sharp, really, where like Visual Studio is the like the the, the de facto or the the standard. Uh, but with Python, there isn't really like a clear front running standard for IDEs. I would say Py PyCharm is probably the closest thing to that. But um, anyway. 
The next one is object oriented uh, or procedural. I should have said versus procedural. Uh, so th those are two different ways of actually writing computer code. Object oriented programming came about what in like the eighties, probably. It was probably even way beyond that, but like started becoming like a, a common thing in the eighties into the nineties when you had you know Java, uh, which was fully object oriented, and you know, C sharp or .NET infrastructure. Um, so with with Python, things get really confusing because when you start off with Python, it's almost always hello world examples and everything is always done in a procedural way. Um, whereas like if you find in C sharp, like you can't have a procedural way of doing a hello world. You have to do a fully object oriented, you know, uh, console that right line, things like that. Um, th you have to have an actual program with a main starting point, things like that. Uh, where Python, you, you, ha you, don't ha you, you don't have to. So um, you could just write a, a script that, that is self-contained in one file and just execute that script manually. Um, and, and it's very easy to do. And that's why Python's a great first language to teach people. But then somewhere along the lines, when, when you want to develop a Django or an, you know, an Instagram code base or anything major with Python, that's when you're going to start building uh, classes and you have to start looking at class inheritance and things like that. And um, and that's where people's mind gets blown. And I, I have like a, an equation here or, or um an anecdote basically where it's like uh, it's like finding out that there's no Santa. So um, you learn this procedural way of doing something and then realize that there is a completely opposite way and, and, and a, a way that's much more hard uh, for newbies to, to wrap their minds around why we, we have object oriented programming. But it's, it, it, it takes time to, to get into that. And uh, for Python, it's one of those unique languages that can be both procedural and object oriented. So eventually you're going to have that Santa moment. Next one is linting. This one is also driving me crazy lately because um, a lot of the editors like Visual Studio Code with its Python extension, like it's expecting you to have Python linting extensions installed as well. And for the most part, people don't have to worry about linting. Like I've never worried about linting in any of my personal projects because um, I, I, I don't have multiple people in my code base. Now, linting is all it is, is it, it's a set of rules that say, hey, when we have um, Python names, I, I want you know I want to use this formatting or something like that. I want to use um, you know t camel casing and and um, th there there could be rules that are set on. Okay, I just named a class something with all undercase, uh, and I, I need to have that be P Pascal casing or something like that. Well, linting you you define the rules and then it just runs and it kind of watches the code as it's being written, and it will provide little squigglies under the lines of code that don't match up to your linting rules. What linting is great for is it's great for getting a bunch of different developers that write code in a bunch of different ways, all writing code the same way under a uh, you know a unified set of uh, of instructions that's usually passed down through you know the the person in charge of the project or um, you know the, the the most senior dev that's assigned to the project but that said like linting is not something that any beginner developer needs to worry about especially with python and uh, and definitely if i could update my tutorial series to to reflect the way visual studio code is to to where it's always like suggesting linting and all this stuff like i wish they could just turn that off um but anyway, guys, that's my list, man. These are the six things that, that trip up newbie developers in Python uh, all the time, it seems like. All right, guys, take care. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, guys, what's up? So this video was brought to you by the Tech Academy. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. From the courses list here, they have computer basics, overall software development, GitHub, uh, HTML5, CSS, database. And there's a lot more courses and they're adding courses all the time. So make sure you guys give them a look. Once again, the link is in the description tab below. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.